Colorado High School Activities Association Baseball is on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. This afternoon from Sunset Baseball Field and Brush, it's another Patriot League clash as the visiting Valley Vikings take on the Brush B-Diggers along with Kevin Fergus. I'm John Beltran. They just played yesterday where the B-Diggers improved to 4-4, four four, defeating Valley 20-9. Valley sitting at 3-8. and eight. Kevin, you look at the final score of that game, you figure, oh, Brush was winning from the beginning, but they had to rally to win that game. They certainly did. I mean, they, they, they come out, they put bat on ball for the first two innings, and uh, they got run in the first, run in the second. But uh, Valley Valley countered with three in the first and four in the second, and uh, Brush was in a deficit of seven to two, and they, they had to fight and struggle all, all game in order to be able to, to get, to get uh, the runs, to be able to get the victory. Yep. And they won by 11. Batting first for Valley's the second baseman, Izzy Gutierrez. The shortstop, Caleb Kachari, hits second. The catcher, Servando Perez, hits third. Ty Stoss, the pitcher, is the cleanup hitter. Brandon Blanco, the third baseman, is hitting fifth. Left fielder, Cooper Foster, hits sixth. Batting seventh, the right fielder, Zach Miles. Max Doolittle, the first baseman, hits eighth. And Cameron Dudley, the DH, hits ninth. For the B-Diggers defensively, Kyle Wellens at first. The second baseman is Hondo, Alejandro Matos Garcia. Ty Griffith at third. And between them at short is Braxton Shelton. Caden Schwinton left. David Wolf in center. The right fielder is Caden Moriarty. Cesar Hinojos behind the plate and on the mound is Chase Krieger. And the pitch swung on and popped up on the left side of the infield. The third baseman backs up and the ball is dropped over there by Griffith. And just like yesterday when the B-Diggers began the game defensively with an error, it's happened again. The error on the third baseman, Ty Griffith. And, you know, here's the bottom line, Kevin, is that we already know. And Ty's not used to playing third, by the way. So he's normally the catcher they just played yesterday. But we know this is not even close to a state tournament type of team defensively. Brush has been, I mean, they have played some really poor games on the defensive side. And that's upstairs to Kachari. Five errors on Monday against University. According to Max Preps, three yesterday. I think you might have had even a, a fourth or fifth error in there. I had a fourth error in there. They, but they, They've got to clean this up. The opening pitch today was brought to you by Buildings by Design. When it comes to experience, Buildings by Design is the best in the business. Quality, commitment, and experience makes Buildings by Design the only choice when it comes to your next project. And that pitch is up and away to the left-handed hitting Caleb Kachari, two balls and no strikes. So an error to begin the game, and that is not good for Brush. Again, it happened yesterday as well in the bottom of the first inning. The stretch by Krieger. And the offering. Swung on and grounded a second. Let's see if it could be two. Hondo to second for one to first, and that's offline by Shelton. A fielder's choice, 4-6. And there's one down, but even there, that could have been a double play. Of course, it's tougher with a left-handed hitter up there. One down here for Servando Perez. Hitting from the right side. As Kevin mentioned, Valley kind of stunned Brush yesterday with a 7-2 to lead after three innings. But even the B-Diggers got some help from Valley defensively, Kevin. There were a number of plays where uh, Brush hit the ball right out of fielder, and they end up dropping it. First baseman dropped it, right fielder dropped it, center field dropped it. Shortstop had two in one inning where he just couldn't get a handle on, on the pitch, on the, on the, the ground ball. Pitch is a strike on the off-speed. Bell tie, no balls and one strike. The B-Diggers do not play until Tuesday after today in Strasburg. Then Wednesday, they'll be in Greeley. So a couple of road games next week. And the pitch, swing and a miss. Krieger threw it right by him. It is no balls and two strikes. Perez hitting 531. Wow. Man, that's a, I'm looking at Max Preps there. That is a huge average at any level. And the 0-2. And the breaking ball's up and in. I'm surprised he didn't let that hit him. He let it hit you in the left shoulder on a ball that's probably traveling 60 miles an hour. It doesn't even hurt you. And he's a catcher. So and cat a, catchers yeah. are tough, you know. Yeah. They, they, they can take a, a hit by pitch. Yeah, I'm sure he wants to hit. But on an 0-2 pitch, you're down on the count. One ball, two strikes, one out, just underway. Brush and Valley from Sunset Baseball Field. The pitch swung on and chopped down to third and is foul. Game time temperature, 81 degrees here in Brush. One of the warmer days we've had in May. 
It's been in the 70s for the most part. By the way, you'll want to be listening throughout the course of this game, especially in the fifth inning. It's National Hamburger Day. That'll clue you in. If you're listening, it could be a payoff for you. If you're not, nothing I can do. But then again, if you're not, you wouldn't know what's happening right now, at least uh, what I'm saying. Two balls and two strikes. The Bender's upstairs. Kachari at first with one down at the top of the first inning. Enojos lays down the sign. Jace Krieger looking back, coming home. Swung on and chopped the short. Shelton to his right backhand. Throws to second for one and back to first, and that's going to be late. The ball skips up against the fence. Nice play there by Braxton to a knee. That was not an easy play for the junior shortstop, but he made an excellent play there, and there's two down. One thing the bead diggers have to work on, though, is the relay. You've had already two shaky relays on the back end of the double plays, even though I think he was going to beat that out anyway. Here is Ty Stotts, big, strong, right-handed hitter, batting 576. And the pitch, and the bender is a strike. No balls in one strike, got it letter high. If they've got averages like this, Kevin, it tells you that they're really lacking with a pitching and defensive department. As evidenced by yesterday's game, giving up 20 runs after holding the lead by five going into the fourth inning. And the offering. Swung on and driven to right field. That's got some carry to it. Back there, reaching out, and it's off the glove of the right fielder, Caden Moriarty. Rounding third is Perez, and he's going to score in the throw to the plate as he slides in. And the ball gets away. We'll give him a double, but that could have been caught out there because he got twisted around. We'll give him a double, but he could have actually caught that ball. He got twisted around and hit off the top of his glove. But again, those are makeable plays defensively. Those are the little things that uh, the teams that University and Eaton, they, they make those plays. Brush needs to improve on that, make sure that they, they, they take care of the simple things because it's those things that capitalize on the other team scores runs. Well, when the ball's hit, Kevin, off the right-hander, it's going to tail away and towards the line, and that's why that ball was misread there by Moriarty, but it's a double to pitch, and that is upstairs. One ball and no strikes to Brandon Blanco who is hitting out of the five hole. Blanco goes in with a 355 average with a man at second, one nothing Valley on the two bagger there by the previous hitter of the pitch and that's up and in. Previous hitter of course being Ty Stotts. Two balls and no strikes. This is an unearned run and the big digger pitchers have given up a ton of unearned runs this year. And the offering, that's down and away. Ball three with no strikes. To Brandon Blanco on deck is Cooper Foster. And the thing with Krieger, you extend his pitch count. And the pitch, swing and a miss. All right, I'm not sure what's going on there, but they have free Will, I guess, to swing at three O's. Three and one here to Blanco with a man at second and two down. Enojo setting up on the outer portion of the pitch, and that ball hit him. A hit batter. It would have been ball four anyway. Here's Cooper Foster. Foster comes in batting 071. Well, you have extremes when it comes to certain batting averages here. Two 500 hitters and an 071 right now. Another right-handed hitter for Valley. Looking back, the pitch. That's a strike right down the middle. Thigh high, it's 0-1. No balls and one strike. Two on, two out. one nothing Valley over Brush in the top of the first inning. Runners take their leads. And the pitch swung on and chopped foul up the third base side. Count moves to 0 and 2 with Zach Miles waiting to hit next. Got a little slight breeze there, Kevin. The flag's just, moving a little bit, but it's just not a little much. bit. But it's not like uh, last week when Brush was playing Sterling and the ball was carrying out. 
Yeah, that's right. They had two home runs from Shelton. Swung on line towards right field. That'll drop for a base hit. Moriarty fields it on the second hop. Runner's going to round third. Throw towards the plate on a hop. The slide and out at the plate is Aiden Lechuga on the throw there from Moriarty. And a tremendous defensive play. That's what the beat diggers need. And Valley is retired here in the top of the first inning. However, they do pick up a run on two hits. There was a beat digger error and two left. Valley scores a run in the top of the first. Beat diggers are coming to bat. Beat digger baseball is brought to you in part by Stubbs Gas and Oil on 1010K SIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Swung on and grounded to right field for a base hit on the first pitch of the bottom of the first inning. That's Ty Griffith coming through for the bead diggers. We'll set up the bead diggers starting lineup here momentarily. As Valley has a 1-0 lead on a Ty Stotts RBI double. Braxton Shelton is now the hitter for Brush. B Digger starting lineup brought to you by Equitable Savings and Loan. Mobile banking on the go makes banking easier for you when you're on the go. Check them out today. Equitable Savings and Loan. And the pitch is off the glove of the Valley catcher, Servando Perez, for the B Diggers. It is Griffiths, Shelton, Kyle Wellen bats third, Hondo bats fourth. The fifth hitter is Caden Moriarty. David Wolf hits sixth. The catcher, Cesar Inojo, bats seventh. Inojo is followed by Jace Krieger and Caden Schwint. And he 1-0. Swung on and popped foul. Not a playoff to the right. Defensively. At first is Max Doolittle. The second baseman is Caleb Kachari. Over at third is Brandon Blocko. In between him at shortest Kachari. Excuse me. Second baseman is Gutierrez. Cooper Foster's in left. Swung on and foul back. The center fielder is Jackson Dudley. Zach Miles in right. Behind the plate is Perez. And Ty Stotts is on the mound. One ball and two strikes here to Braxton Shelton. And the pitch swung on and fouled off to the right, just reached out. Ty Stotts uh, for Valley comes into the game with a 1-2 and two record and a 738 ERA. He's just pitched 12, 12 innings, 12, 12 and a third innings coming into the, this game so far. And the pitch way outside. Count moves to two and two to Shelton. Everything I found out about Stotts yesterday, the reason why he didn't start, because I, I certainly thought that he would have pitched yesterday, but uh, I guess he's had some leg problems, hamstring, groin. Two That's ball. hard when you're pitching. Yep, two balls, two strikes. Down and away, it's three and two. Well, and he could be favoring some of that right now. He's not really using his lower body. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's he's just winging it and uh, taking a very short stride. Three balls and two strikes to Shelton. Man at second. Nobody out. And the pitch. And that is a called strike three on the outside corner. And there's one down. It might have shaved the corner. Stott strikes out Shelton for the opening out here in the bottom of the first inning. Yeah, that's a borderline pitch, but that's one you probably got to go after. Here is Kyle Wellen and the offering. Fastball is tapped slowly up the third baseline. If it stays fair, there's no play. It's a base hit for Kyle Wellen on that little chopper. And I tell you what, that pitch that starts through to Shelton was high velocity there. Now batting second baseman, number 12, Hondo Maltos Garcia. Here is Hondo batting 200. Sure, he'd like to step up his game offensively. With first and third, Valley leads by a score of one to nothing here in the bottom of the first inning. Well, where he was after about the first three games, four games, he, he's done tremendous. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's just was. a progress of just adding to it each and every game, where he's he's his average is coming up. And the pitch, fastball is outside. He's throwing a lot off the plate here. A ton off the plate. One ball and no strikes. The Bay Diggers have a couple of hits here in the bottom of the first inning. The stretch and the offering. And the bender is right there for a strike on the inner half at the knees. And the count levels at one and one. Good curveball there. 
from the right-hander Stotts. At the chest, runner goes, swung on and hit off the end of the bat on the ground. Stepping on first and now no play. Had a play at home. Griffith is going to score against Hondo the RBI. Max Doolittle hesitated. He had a play at home if he steps on the bag and throws immediately. And that's to the B-Diggers' benefit. They tie the game at one. Kevin, that was a defensive uh, miscue mentally there. Very much so. I mean, uh, he should have come up and, and thrown either right at home, run at the runner, or, uh, you know. I think they would have had him. I mean, right. he was several steps away from the plate, and, and Griffith is fast, but that ball was hit fairly sharply off the end of the bat, the pitch. Swung on and grounded a second. Should be a routine play. Gobbling up, throwing to first is Izzy Gutierrez, and Caden Moriarty is retired on one pitch. One run for the B-Diggers. They pick up two hits. There were no errors and a man left. Let's head to the second inning in Brush. Brush one, Valley one on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. The B-Diggers and Valley Vikings are deadlocked at one as we head to the second inning along with Kevin Fergus. I'm John Beltran in Brush. The B-Diggers at four and four and Valley at three and eight. It's all, not only National Hamburger Day, it's National Brisket Day. But I, we don't have brisket here. I mean, you I, know what? I had brisket did yesterday. I did. Uh -huh. It was very, very good. Is there such a thing as bad brisket? I guess if it's cooked too quickly. You know, isn't brisket a slow cooking thing? It is. Thing, right? It is. The better, the slower, the better. 100%. Here we go with Zach Miles against Jace Krieger to begin the second. Righty against righty the pitch. And that's upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Yeah, you know that Caden Moriarty, who hasn't started since last week, the no-hitter against Sterling, he will pitch again on Wednesday, you would think, against University and Greeley. I thought maybe he would end up going a couple innings tonight and, you know, just a nice tune-up just right. to be on the mound. But uh, Coach Odell decided different, and uh, you still got him in reserve. I mean, he can come in, throw 30 pitches, and he'd, he'd be just fine. Swing and a miss on the previous pitch. Here comes the 1-1 one -one from Jace Krieger, and that's outside. Ball two, strike one. Miles is hitting 280. 2-1-1 two one. to Miles, tied at one in the second. Hinojos lays down the sign and the pitch. And that is a good pitch. A nice breaking ball. Belt high. And the count levels at two and two. Brush is wearing their gray pants with their uh, marigold top with uh, maroon lettering. Valley is wearing white pants with their sunburst yellow top. Swung on and grounded a short. Shelton on the third hop. Fires to first for the out. And there's one down with black lettering. Miles is retired, and that'll bring up the number eight hitter, Max Doolittle. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. Let's check out Doolittle, who is hitting 091 from the right side with an open stance. Jace Krieger has done pretty well so far. And the pitch. Swag and a miss down in the zone. It's 0-1. One thing the B Diggers want to do from here on out the rest of the game is play really perfect defense. You have to. If they don't have a perfect game after, especially up to the first inning, that is chopped to short. Shelton to his left, sets, fires, two down. Well, that's the way to do it. Nice routine plays there for Braxton's been busy. He's already got three assists in this game. Here's the number nine hitter, Cameron Dudley. Batting 200. The right-hander, Krieger, delivers. And that is down and in. One ball and no strikes. This might be Sessa's first action behind the plate, first or second. At least this season, he's caught. He's caught before. He's caught oh, yeah. before, plenty. 1-0 pitch. Swung on, popped up. This will end the inning. The shortstop, Shelton, is going to range to his left and make the two-handed grab. And Braxton Shelton puts away all three balls that were hit by the Valley Vikings. We head to the bottom of the second inning. 
from Sunset Baseball Field and Brush. The Bee Diggers won. The Valley Vikings won. Bee Digger Baseball is brought to you in part by Bank of Colorado on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. And the pitch is a ball here to David Wolf to begin the bottom of the second inning. One to one, Brush and Valley. And the pitch is a strike, a swinging strike, and the count levels at one ball and one strike. Both teams scored their runs in the first inning, their single runs. The pitch and the benders inside. From the right hander, Ty Stotts. David Wolf goes in with a 182 average. And the pitch. That's a fastball for a strike on the outside corner. And the count levels at two and two. Cesar Inojos is on deck, followed by Jace Krieger. Ty Stotts with the offering. That is a called strike three, knee high on the outside corner. And Wolf is strikeout victim number two. And there's one down. Here's the right-handed hitting, Inojos. Sessa batting 167. But it took him a while to get his first hit. I think it was in his 15th plate appearance. And the curveball's a strike on the inner half. No balls in one strike. B-Diggers and Vikings scored a combined 29 runs yesterday. Brush won 20 to 9. The pitch, fastball is way outside. And the count levels at 1 and 1. Yeah, rare that you see both teams dressed in the same color jersey. 1-1 one, one pitch. That's right there. A strike. Outer half at the knees. Stotts is uh, finding himself. Well, I mean, he, he's getting into a nice rhythm right here. Yeah, he's going straight fastball. He's throwing, he's throwing a couple of breaking balls, effective breaking balls. 1-2. That curveball's inside. Don't think it had much break to it. And the count levels at 2-2 two and two to number 22. One out, bottom two. Brush and Valley deadlocked at 1 in Brush. And the pitch swung on and fouled back. Went with a heater away. Remains at two balls and two strikes. Here to the catch of the pitch. And the curveball's up and in. At least I think that was another intentional one. Three and two. Rush is just going to have to lean into a couple of those pitches yeah, when, he, when he's throwing them on that inside portion of the plate. Yeah, maybe the shoulder. 3-2 offering, swung on and chopped to short, backing up, fielding, firing to first, and that's going to be late. Kachari did not get a good throw on that ball. He doesn't have a strong throwing arm, and Sessa beats it out. Well, that tells you I don't think Kachari's a, a natural shortstop, not with his arm. He does not have the arm to make that throw. He probably had to come in on that one, but would have had a little bit of a tricky hop. Last night, uh... Izzy Gutierrez, the second baseman, was playing shortstop. He has the arm for shortstop, but uh, yeah. Izzy made the errors, and so they put Kashari because he's a little, little more sure-handed. But uh, he was backing up on that play, and uh, he didn't, he didn't get much on it. Fastball's a strike on the outside corner to Jace Krieger. It's 0-1. Yeah, I think he's got to get more legs underneath it. And the pitch swung on and fisted in the air, foul down the third base and left field line. They won't catch up to that one. It's 0-2. Fill up your cooler, gas up your car, Stubbs Gas and Oil and Wiggins. Easy and convenient, which makes them the only stop you need, Stubbs Gas and Oil. No balls, two strikes, one out, one on, bottom two. Deadlocked at one between the Bee Diggers and Valley Vikings with Caden Schwint on deck. Short lead there for Hinojos the pitch. Swung on and chopped up the third base side. This could be trouble, and it's going to be handled. Throw to first is going to be in time. Boy, that was not a conventional play by the catcher. Perez tried to glove it, then barehanded it. But he makes the play, and Krieger's retired 2-3. to three, Advancing as he no holes, and there's two outs. Caden Schwent, the number nine hitter, leads the B-Diggers in hitting. Schwent is batting 385 going into this game. Laying down the sign is Servando Perez. And Ty Stotts comes home. Swing and a miss on a pitch down in the zone. It's 0-1. Got a nice three-quarters delivery there. 
Fairly short lead at second, the pitch. Swung on, that is lined into left field for a base hit. Runner around third, headed for the plate. The third of the plate is going to be late. And that'll be the courtesy runner, Tanner Ludgate, scoring. And on the RBI single from Caden Schwent, the Bay Diggers lead the Valley Vikings 2-1 to one in the bottom of the second inning. How about Caden? He takes a short swing. Nothing fancy about that swing. Nice and short to the ball. He goes up about two or three inches from the knob, and uh, he just puts bat on ball, and, and good things happen. And if the pitch isn't in the zone, he walks. He, he's patient enough in order to do that. Smart hitter. There's Ty Griffith. He singled his first time up the pitch. Fastball is inside. One ball and no strikes to the B-digger third baseman. Had a base at his first time up. And the offering. And that's in the dirt. Runner going to second. The throw on a hop. The slide. The tag. And safe. Schwinn steals the base. Ahead of the tag. Applied by Gutierrez. I don't think uh, Vikings are happy about that whatsoever. That was a bang-bang play at second. And just because the ball beats you doesn't mean the tag beats you. And that's why it's, a, it's not an easy call for the umpire. Coach Kistler came out, just wanted to ask the, the base umpire, took about 10, 10 steps onto the field and got his question answered and headed back to the dugout. Two balls and no strikes. The B-Diggers with a 2-1 to one lead in the second. The pitch swung on and fisted in the air. That should be called by Kachari. The shortstop it is. And the inning is over. For the B-Diggers in the second, a run on two hits. No errors, and one man left. We head to the third inning. Kevin Fergus will take you through innings three and four, and then we'll see what happens in this game once we go to the fifth inning. The score, brush two, Valley one on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. The Sunset Field in brush. Brush with a two-to-one lead over the Valley Vikings. Jace Krieger on the hill for the Beat Diggers. And the top of the order for the Valley Vikings comes to the plate. Izzy Gutierrez will be the hitter. He, he reached via the air in the first inning on Ty Griffith's drop of the pop-up. Ball thrown upstairs for the first pitch. The offering from Krieger. And Izzy Gutierrez made Coach Kistler down the third baseline uh, jump out of the way. Well, when you swing at that pitch, you really can't do anything with it, Kevin, because it's so inside. You're better off just taking it for ball two. That was not going to be called a strike. But these hitters want to swing away, especially early in the game. I think what Valley sees is 300 down the lines. I, yeah, I, I think that's yeah. enticing to them. Yeah, it's a band box. Curve ball by Krieger called a strike. Outside corner. Is this the shortest field? It's got to be the shortest dimensions in the Patriot League, at least the left field, I would think. I don't, I don't recall anything shorter than this, or at least the same dimensions. You know, Valley is 365 and 360 in left center and right center, uh, but they didn't have anything written uh, for down the line. That was fouled off down the right field line. Izzy well, Gutierrez, uh, hard foul down the left field line and uh, a deep fly ball down the right field line. Just going where the pitch he, is he thrown. Can, he can spray it. One-two pitch from Krieger. Curve ball in the dirt. Hinojos uh, scoops it up. Two runs on four hits for Brush. A run on two hits for Valley. The B-Diggers have committed the game's only error. Two-two, the offering. Curve ball. Lined out to left center field. David Wolf moves over in order to pick it up. Schwint picked it up, and he's throwing into second. And Izzy Gutierrez is on at first with a single. I thought maybe he would uh, do a hustle double, but uh, stayed right where he was. I tell you what, that was not a bad pitch. The hitter, uh, Gutierrez, had to go down. He reached for that one down in the zone, and he lofted it out to left center. That was not a hanging ball. He just did a nice job as a hitter. Lead-off hitter on for the Valley Vikings. Izzy Gutierrez takes a good lead at first. Krieger looks in to Cesar Hanojos, his catcher. The sign, the stretch, 
And a bunt towards third base. Griffith picks it up and throws over to first base. Swelling at first. The out. Izzy Gutierrez moves up to second on the sacrifice. That's an excellent play by the B-Digger third baseman. He made it look pretty routine as he had to charge. But Valley now is a runner in scoring position. Remember, this game could be tied because Caden Moriarty in the first inning made a tremendous throw to eliminate Aiden Lechuga at the plate. If not, it could be 2-2 now, but instead the B-Diggers have the one-run lead, but Valley is certainly threatening here in the third. Valley runner on at second. Servando Perez comes to the plate. He's hitting north of 500. And he hits a ball a ton out to center field. They're going to have a tag up at second. And Wolf pulls it in and throws it to Shelton. And the relay over to third. And uh, Izzy Gutierrez is safe at third on the sacrifice fly. Two outs. Now batting pitcher, number 25, Ty Stutz. That's a good job of the B-Diggers executing there just defensively. Hit your cutoff. You had your backup in Krieger. Little th you said the little things. But you know what's happening now? The little things are the big things because they're not making them into the little things. They, they remain the little things when you do them right. When you do them incorrectly, they're the big things. And then the other team takes advantage of that. The pitch from Krieger, a curveball, strike on the outside corner of the plate. Well, Ty Stotts was the hitter who hit that fly ball towards Moriarty. He got spun around. We scored it a double, but Moriarty, as good a fielder as he is, should have made that catch in right field if he read it correctly. Ty Stotts hitting 586 coming into the game and had a double his first time up. Pitch strike on the inside corner. Well, that's a missed call. That's a ball one. Shoulder high. Yeah, that, that was inside. I don't want to say it too loud, but I think that was a missed call. Ty Stotts last night in the second inning hit a three-run home run straightaway center field in oh. Valley, and he hit it a ton. And David Wolf just kept going back, 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 and he ran out of room. Pitch from Krieger upstairs and over the head of Ty Stotts. Yeah, I'm not well, saying something. Ty Stotts is probably about six foot three. He's strong. Yeah, he is strong. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Runner at third for Valley. Brush with a two to one lead in the top of the third inning. Stotts fouls that back over the screen. Krieger gets the ball from the umpire. Be nice if Brush be able to get out of this inning without giving up a run. Well, two to one strike to ball ratio for Krieger. So despite the fact he has limited varsity experience, he's throwing pretty well here. Pitch from Krieger, curve ball, lined out to left center field. And Schwint dove for the ball, didn't get it. Stotts comes into second, stand up double. Izzy Gutierrez scores. Ball game is tied, 2 2. Yeah, he, it's a stand-up double, but he kind of loafed into second. Looked like, I mean, that would play. It could have been pretty close there. And now Stotts will get a courtesy runner. And the courtesy runner will be Lechuga. He was the one thrown out at the plate. On the base hit from Zach Miles in the first inning. So Valley has tied the game, and Stotts is two for two with a couple of two baggers. I'd mentioned earlier that uh, Stotts has had some leg problems, so I'm, that's another reason why they can get him right. as a pitcher back to the dugout. But, uh, I mean, he, he could have gotten thrown out there just because he wasn't hustling. Pitch from Krieger to Brandon Blanco. Upstairs, a ball. Well, which tells you he probably doesn't want to slide either. Brandon Blanco hitting 286 coming into the game, and he was hit by pitch in the first inning. Pitch from Krieger, curve upstairs. Two balls, no strikes. Yeah, there are times that Jace is not using his legs as much as he should, and those pitches are staying high. But again, we're talking about limited experience at the varsity level, and he's hanging in tough for Brush. Strike right at the letters. Krieger's battling, like you mentioned, he's throwing two to one uh, strikes to balls. On the ratio, last night Sam Metlin was throwing three strikes to a oh, ball. Oh, I mean he's all he's always in the strike zone. At least from what I've seen, and he did the same thing against University. Pitch from Krieger to Blanco, curveball fouled off. Evens account, two balls, two strikes. Premier Farm Credit understands production ag and has been serving our rural communities for over 100 years with locations in Sterling, Fort Morgan, Yuma, and Holyoke. Krieger looks in, get the sign from Hinojos. 
Got it. Checks the runner at second. Pitch. And Blanco strikes out swinging. Valley scored one run on the inning on two hits. Left one runner on base. The score after two and a half innings of play, Brush Beat Diggers 2, Valley Vikings 2. You're listening to Beat Digger Baseball on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. 2-2 score in the bottom of the third inning. Braxton Shelton comes to the plate. The pitch from Ty Stotts for the Valley Vikings, a ball. You know, Braxton is hungry now after getting caught looking his first time up. Pitch from Stotts to Braxton outside, ball two. Braxton was productive last night in an 0 for set situation. Yeah, he, had, RBIs. he had RBIs. Yeah. Pitch from Stotts. Strike on the outside corner at the knees. I tell you what, that's the extreme outside. I think that was the same pitch he got rung up on on a 3-2 in the opening frame. Stotts working quickly, the pitch, and Shelton hits the ball a ton to right field down the line and over the right fielder's head. Zach Miles is playing in right, and Braxton pulls up at second base with a double. He did hit that a long way, much longer than I thought. Much longer. That ball just carried and carried and carried. Miles had plenty of time in order to get back underneath it. But yeah, he misread I, he, it. He completely misread it. He was going to try to take one over the shoulder, and it, it just kept carrying all the way to the warning track. And I think once he hit that, it, it, it surprised him. That's going to Pitch drop. from uh, Stotts to Wellen. Wellen hits a single up the middle. And uh, Jackson Dudley gets the ball back in, and Shelton moves up to third. Yeah, he didn't hit that well at all. Wellen hit it off his fist, but he's two for two. Kyle's average continues to climb. And let's see, Kyle was hitting 333 going into the game. He's going to be taking over the team lead. If Caden Schwinn has retired a couple times in this game, Caden already has a base hit in his first plate appearance. That brings to the plate Hondo Maltos Garcia. Hondo grounded out his first time up, but nobody out. Runners at first and third for the Diggers. We've got a good scoring opportunity here. The stretch, a strike on the outside corner at the knees. And again, stay tuned. Today is National Hamburger Day. We've got something to talk about in the fifth inning. This will benefit anybody listening in. Pitch from Stotts, curveball, took a little bit off, and Hondo swings through the pitch. Down on the count, no balls and two strikes. That was a nasty breaking ball there thrown by Stotts, and it had Hondo way out in front. Pitch from Stotts. Outside, Wellen takes off, takes second base on a defensive indifference. Yeah, I still call that a steal because uh, he wouldn't have thrown him out. And the reason they wouldn't have thrown him out is because the pitch was so outside that Perez had to backhand it. And now you got a 1-2 count. Pitch from Stotts to Hondo, and Hondo swings through the pitch. Pitch was up in his eyes, but it curved, and uh, he swung through the pitch for the out. So Brush has one out. Runners at second and third. And watch out for Caden here. He, Based on what I've seen, he loves swinging at the first pitch. And he's got two ducks on a pond right there. In the dirt, the pitch from Ty Stotts to Servando Perez. Caden Moriarty hitting from the left side. Grounded a second his first time up. Stotts working quickly. Ball outside. See, if I'm, if I'm a pitcher here, I'm sorry, Kevin, I would work around him. I would work around him and set up a bases loaded situation. I would not give in here. Fell back. John could have reached out to his right and caught that. And then landed in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, very much so. I think that's one thing Coach Kistler has his pitchers do is they just work quickly. Yeah. Stotts gets the ball. He gets a sign and he fires. And uh, Moriarty hits the ball to right field. And we've got one run in for Brush and uh, the throw coming to the plate and a second run in. Wellen comes in and scores. Shelton scores and Moriarty on at first. 
with a two RBI single here in the bottom of the third inning. Kevin, that's exactly why you pitch around him. He's too good of a hitter. You just gave Brush those two runs is now four to two. The board says two to two. Should be four to two. They'll catch up here. Well, one out in the inning. There you go. Brush scored two runs. Yeah, you want it, You should have pitched a Wolf here with the bases loaded. And Wolf hits the ball hard at Izzy, and Izzy throws over to the first baseman, Max Doolittle, and Doolittle dropped it. Well, but you, you cannot Davin, assume a double play, but that should nope. have been a double play and a, gr a very well-hit ball. Dave and Wolf hit the ball hard there. Unfortunate that, he, that he's out, but, uh, you know, that, that's just the way baseball is. Sometimes you can hit the ball hard and come up over, and you can hit the ball a little dribbler and have a base hit. Yeah, like Kyle Wellen's second at bat. We've had two dribblers by Brush. Pitches down and away. I'm just picking up Kevin here while he was oh, looking at his uh, phone. One ball and no strikes. Cesar Hanojos at the plate. Two outs for Brush. Runner at first. Moriarty pitch hit by Hanojos to Izzy Gutierrez at second and over to Doolittle at first for the out. Go ahead, Kevin. Let's rep. Inning recap. Brush scored two runs on three hits. There were no Valley Viking errors, and there was one runner left on base. After three complete innings, Brush four, Valley two. You're listening to Beat Digger Baseball on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Three complete innings here in Brush with uh, Brush Beat Diggers leading the Valley Vikings four to two. Brush has four runs on seven hits. There's been one brush air, and Brush has left three runners on base. Valley's left three runners on base as well, and uh, but they've got two runs on four hits at this point in time. Jace Krieger throwing well for the Brush Bee Diggers. 47 pitches. Jace, Jace looking smoother and smoother as we go further and further into this game. Cooper Foster comes to the plate for the Valley Vikings. He singled his first time up to right right field. That was a play where he hit it out to, out to Moriarty and Moriarty threw Aiden Lechuga out right. of the plate. I had the wrong guy, I had Miles, but you're right, it was Cooper Foster on that base hit to right field. Krieger and Hanojos working together, the pitch. Took a little bit off, swinging strike. Swinging strike from Cooper Foster. And here's the thing. When you have a pitcher throwing uh, some of that finesse, you don't want to overswing. That was an overswing there by Foster. You want an easier swing to put the ball in play. The pitch, a strike on the outside corner. Had a little bit of a wrinkle on that pitch, John. Yeah, oh, yeah, without a doubt. There's some movement there. Uh, Jace is not throwing straight stuff. I mean, he's had a couple of hangers, but two runs and three innings allowed. He's been He's been solid. The 0-2 pitch from Krieger, curveball, strike three, outside corner, looking. Good pitch by Jace. Attack, attack the batter and uh, put, the, put the guy down on three pitches. That's what you need to do. Well, that was on a breaking ball, too, and for Krieger, that's his second strikeout. And now you're getting towards the bottom of the order, which is going to help his confidence, especially if he continues to pitch this well. Zach Miles comes to the plate. He led off the second inning. And he grounded out his first time up. Pitch from Krieger. Swung on. A strike. Some of his pitches are almost sinking, which is nice. The off-speed is sinking, almost like a changeup. When you watch him when he throws his warm-ups, he does that all the time. And, and he's got that down. And now he's throwing it in the game. The pitch from Krieger. Kurt on the outside corner of the plate. I don't think it was curve. I think that was a fastball. But it had movement. It had movement. It had lateral movement, and that makes it much more difficult for the hitter to make contact, at least solid contact. Started to fool me. Krieger with the 0-2 pitch to Zach Miles. Took a little bit off in the dirt. Hanojos blocks it, keeps it in front of him, gets the ball back out to Krieger. 53 pitches on the day for Jace. In the top of the fourth inning. Brush with a 4-2 to two lead. 1-2 count, the pitch. And Zach Miles goes down swinging on strikeout. 
two outs in the inning. That's uh, Krieger's third third K for the day. Brings to the plate Max Doolittle. Doolittle's hitting number eight in the order, and Doolittle come into the game I think uh, just below 100 on his batting average. Yep. Pitch from Krieger, and that was a <clears throat> swinging strike. He's getting stronger here. He's getting stronger. Jace is getting confidence, I think. He's feeling good on the mound, uh, throwing balls, uh, curve balls for strikes, getting his fastball to move, the pitch from Krieger. Curve ball. A ball, low. Skips past uh, Cesar Hinojos to the backstop. I'm glad to see that this is a cleaner game than yesterday. That mess yesterday, which produced a... Close to 10 errors, only one error so far through three innings. Pitch from Krieger, hit out to center field. David Wolf moves to his left and hauls the ball in for the out. For the Valley Vikings in the top of the fourth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. After three and a half complete innings, Brush B Diggers four, and you're and the Valley Vikings, too. You're listening to Beat Digger Baseball on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Jace Krieger for the Brush Beat Diggers comes to the plate with a 4-2 to lead as a pitcher for the Diggers. And he steps to the plate against Ty Stotts from the Valley Vikings. Stotts with the pitch. Strike on the outside corner at the knees. Jace Krieger is finding his... Uh, his uh, Rhythm. Feeling his oats, his rhythm on the mound. See if he can get a base hit here. The pitch from Ty Stotts upstairs. I kind of thought that Ty Stotts was uh, finding a rhythm too, but uh, he's given up one run, one run, and two runs in the three innings that he's uh, faced the diggers. Krieger hits the ball, pop up to Izzy Gutierrez at second base. He steps back onto the grass about three steps and hauls that in for the out. Well, he hasn't walked anybody. Stotts has struck out three, given up seven hits, though, as you mentioned. But a couple of those have been dribblers up the third base side. So he's just facing a pretty good lineup for Brush that is coming off a 20-run performance yesterday in Gilcrest. 16 hits yesterday, John. Yep. Pitch from Stotts to Caden Schwent upstairs, a ball. Caden Schwent. Get a base hit. Base hit his first time up, and he also leads Brush. And on base percentage at 579 coming into the game, the pitch from Stotts. And Schwint fouls that back up and over the screen. I like this type of ball player. Short to the ball in this era of let's hit a home run as many times as we can. It's not always true baseball. Ball on a strike. The pitch from Stotts upstairs to Schwint. Easy to do. Schwint stands probably about 5'6". Stotts stands about 6'3". So he just threw that upstairs. The pitch from Stotts. And look at that. Caden Schwent hits a ball to left center field, and it's an automatic they call double. That a double. Did it bounce? Automatic over? double. Okay, ground rule double. I did not see it hit and bounce over the fence, but a ground rule double for Caden Schwent, your leading hitter for the Brush Beat Diggers. And this guy is tearing it up, and again a short swing, and that was a little bit of a topspin on that one. He had plenty of topspin once that ball hit. Near the warning track, it took a huge hop over the fence in left center right next to both of those flags out there, the beat digger flags out left center. One out for Brush with a runner on at second. Ty Griffith at the plate. Pitch on the outside corner of the plate. Strike. The problem with Stotts, he doesn't have much of a change of pace. It's the breaking ball, but there's no change up in his repertoire. Stotts, the offering. Griffith fouls that back up and over the screen. Excellent pitch right there, but that's his that's his changeup. It's the breaking ball, and those are easier to read than good straight-up changeups. I think Brush sees that. They hit that ball the opposite field. That'll put them in good stead for the day. Stotts with the sign, this pitch from the stretch. And Griffith swings at it. The ball gets underneath Servando Perez for a pass ball. Strikeout and a pass ball. Schwent moves up to third on the strikeout. See, as a fan, I never cheered that. And I'm not criticizing fans for cheering that, but I I don't like cheering when, I mean, Brush didn't do anything to get on base here. There was a strikeout. It benefits Brush, which is great. But they did nothing. Uh, you know, that was not a good at bat there, obviously, by Ty. 
I got to fix this. All right, I will take over here. Here's Braxton Shelton. One on. Check it, two on and one out. Four to two, Brush Leeds Valley. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Stretch by Stotts and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Took a huge cut at that one. It's 0 and 1. No balls and one strike. Braxton has struck out and doubled down the right field line. Big RBI opportunities here. And that's down in the zone. And the count levels at one and one. One ball and one strike with two on. I'll give it back to Kevin here momentarily. And Shelton awaits the pitch. Here it is. And that one hit him in the back. A breaking ball that did not break. Braxton not happy about that. I don't blame him. He's been hit more than once this season. And the bases are now loaded for Kyle Wellen, who is two for two. And let's see if Kevin's good luck here is going to extend the lead for Brush up four to two. With the bases loaded one down in the bottom of the fourth inning. He's not walked the batter, but he just hit one. And Coach Kissler is going to pay a visit to the Hill. Like a good neighbor, Greg Mullen and his team at State Farm Insurance are there to make the insurance world easy for you. 842-4555, Greg Mullen at State Farm Insurance. So what are you thinking here, Kevin? This is a critical situation here for Valley. You know, I think uh, Coach Kistler's not going to make a change. I mean, no. after he ended up pitching just about everybody in the kitchen sink yesterday, <laughs> and uh, they could not throw strikes, I mean, he's going to stay with his senior on the hill. And I, I, I know Stotts is probably, uh, you know, struggling just a little bit, but he's just going to have to bear it up and, uh, and, and, and try to fight his way through it. So I'm sure Kistler had uh, some encouraging words for his uh, pitcher, but also the fielders to make the play, see if they can get out of the inning with a double play. Duck comes to the plate with uh, Kyle Wellen. Kyle Wellen, two for two on the day. Stotts the pitch. Strike on the outside corner of the plate. They could break it open here with a nice swing from Kyle Wellen. Pitch, and Wellen swings through the pitch, and it's just fouled right, right back to Servando, but he dropped the ball. But uh, the count, oh ball, no balls and two strikes to Kyle Wellen. Again, Caden Schwind, he's the story of the season offensively for Brush. He got off to a good start. You figure, well, that might fade away as the nine hitter, but he's just kept it going. I think he wants to stay at the nine hole huh. because there's yes. no pressure. There's no pressure. The pitch from Stotts, low, one ball, two strikes. Boy, that smell is mesmerizing on National Hamburger Day, but stay tuned. We're only half an inning away. I got something for you. Wellen pops the ball up, infield fly rule in effect, and Izzy Gutierrez hauls that ball in for the out. So there's two outs in the inning. Excellent pitch there by Stotts down in the zone, and Kyle reached out. Not much he could do with that pitch, but he had to protect in that situation. And now Honda, who's grounded out and struck out with a chance to extend the lead for Brush, which is only sitting at 4-2 to two right now. Brush gets a hit from their cleanup hitter right here and uh, score a couple runs to give them a little bit of space uh, between them and Valley. Curve ball from Stotts to Hondo for a strike. Bases are juiced for the Brush Beat Diggers with a 4-2 to two lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Hondo fouls that pitch back to the screen. Boy, he was right on top of that pitch. It was a breaking ball up in the zone, just got underneath it. But now he's down to the count at 0 and 2. Stotts has been able to do that this whole inning, even, even though their bases are loaded. Uh, he's been getting ahead in the count. And Hondo hits a two hopper to the shortstop over from Kashiari to Izzy Gutierrez for the force out. So for Brush, we'll come back with the inning recap. Right now, they are leading the Valley Vikings 4 to 2. You're listening to Digger Baseball on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Brush with a 4-2 to lead over the Valley Vikings. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Jace Krieger on the hill for the Diggers. In the bottom of the fourth inning, Brush had no runs on one hit. There was no Valley Viking errors, and Brush left three runners on base. For the game, Brush has six runners left on base, twice as many as what Valley has. Our game time is just right over an hour. 
right at an hour. All right, so here it is, National Hamburger Day. Here's the deal. I've got five coupons. I've already taken care of the payment. Got five coupons. And here's the way we're going to do it here. Before we get to Cameron Dudley. Pitch from Krieger. Curveball fouled off at the plate. Now, it's just not coming up to me. You got to step to my right. You step to my right, you give me the safe sign. One per person, not one for two or one for three, one per person. Step to my right, give me the safe sign. I give you a green coupon, it's a free hamburger. I've got five of those, I only have five. The pitch from Krieger. Lined one hopper to Braxton Shelton, throws over to Kyle Wellen at first for the first out. And that's the fourth assist today for Shelton. Been very busy at short, but he's been the defensive cog for the B-Diggers as they have this four to two lead here in the top of the fifth inning. So again, you step to my right, you give me the safe sign. Boom, I pull out a green coupon, you step to the concession stand, it's a free hamburger. If not, I keep them all. But the first five to do so, that's the benefit of listening right now. Chase Krieger, the pitch, upstairs to the leadoff hitter, Izzy Gutierrez. Gutierrez on base twice today. First time he got on base via the air, and uh, the only air in the game, and had a single to left center field his last time Pitch from Krieger to Gutierrez. Popped up. It's in play. Kyle Wellen comes in. And Jace kind of chased him off. And well, the not ball an drops error. foul. Okay, that, that is ridiculous. First of all, Wellen's got to call off Krieger. The, the pitcher should not be near that ball. The pitcher should not be near that ball. That's got to be the first baseman. First baseman takes command. I didn't hear him. If I didn't hear him, you didn't hear him. He didn't call it. No. I mean, that is, come on. I mean, this is game number nine already, and that is horrendous baseball. And I'm not going to sugarcoat that whatsoever. One ball, one strike, one out. Krieger with the pitch to Izzy Gutierrez. And Izzy Gutierrez hits the ball, hard ground ball up the middle, center field. David Wolf picks up the ball, gets it in. Izzy Gutierrez on board the third time today. And that's exactly what happens when you don't make routine plays. That's been the story of the B-Digger season. They were playing better today from innings two through four, but I mean, what just happened there two pitches ago was atrocious. Those are the little things that you've got to take care of so they don't become big things. Cassiari comes to the plate, fielder's choice, and the sacrifice bunt. And he was about to operate out of the windup. Krieger's got to maintain some concentration here because that was part of his miscue on that fly ball as well. Just a little bit of composure is what he needs right here. The pitch from Krieger hit to Hondo over to Braxton at f short and over to Wellen at first for a 4-6-3 double play for the Valley Vikings. No runs on one hit. There was no brush air and there was nobody left on base. So after four and a half innings of play, Brush Beat Diggers four, Valley Vikings two, you're listening to Beat Digger Baseball on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Back to Sunset Field, Caden Moriarty fouls off the first pitch at the plate. Ty Stotts gets the ball back from Servando Perez, working quickly. Moriarty, one for two on the day, the pitch from Stotts, strike on the outside corner. No balls and two strikes to Caden Moriarty, the right fielder, with a perfect throw in the bottom or the top of the first inning to get Brush out of that inning given without giving up more runs. Well, he's also got the go-ahead two-run single, which is why they should have pitched around him earlier in this game before David Wolf lined to second, and then Valley got the final out as they're down to their final six outs, but the B-Diggers are trying to extend the lead here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Pitch from Stotts upstairs. And out of the zone, one ball and two strikes to Moriarty. Unofficially, 72 pitches for Ty Stotts. 48 strikes, 24 balls. Pitch from Stotts. And Moriarty gets a hold of that and hits that ball to Cameron Dudley in center field. And he takes about seven steps back and hauls that ball in for the out. Moriarty give it a good run, and uh, the way the wind's blowing, that might have allowed that ball to carry just a little bit further than, than usual. I'm sorry, I said Cameron Dudley. Uh, his brother, Jackson Dudley, is one that is in center field. 
Brings to the plate David Wolf. First pitch from Stotts to Wolf, a ball up and in. Well, I still have some coupons left, by the way. I saw you gave away one. Yep, no. You know, when I did this promotion for 20 years and 20 hot dogs, they were gone by the first inning. But I promoted that a week before, and so I paid for 20 hot dogs, and they were gone by the first inning. This one I'm just promoting now. David Wolf uh, fouled off the previous pitch and uh, hit that ball to the third baseman. And it just a topper, and the third baseman stayed back on it, and David Wolf was able to leg out a, a single. So That's David Brush's Wolf, ninth hit. I'm sorry, Kevin. David Wolf on it first. He needed to break out, get a base hit. He, he's, hit he's hit the ball hard. The time before, this time he hits it soft, and he gets a base hit. Cesar Hinojos, one for two on the day, and Hinojos hits a two-hopper that took a bad hop over Kachari's head. David Wolf headed towards third and slides in safe, and uh, Hinojos uh, follows him up into second base. That's a bad hop base hit, but that was a mistake there by Dudley in center. That play is not the third. That plays to second. He was not going to get David Wolf at third. That should have been to second, and now the B-Diggers with a chance to extend a two-run lead. And Jace Krieger is 0 for 2 in the game, so he's due here out of the 8 hole. One out for Brush here in the bottom of the fifth inning. We've got uh, courtesy runner for the catcher. Tanner Ludgate comes to second base to run for Cesar Hanojos. Jace Krieger 0 for 2 on the day. Could help himself out with a base hit right here. Pitch from Stotts upstairs, but Krieger swings through the pitch for a strike. And he overswung big time. He's got a as the infield is playing in for Valley, so he's not going to get an easy one here. That pitch was up in his eyes, the pitch from Stotts. Took something off. Krieger out in front, swinging. No balls and two strikes to Jace Krieger. Stotts gets his sign from Perez, the pitch. Krieger squared around, not that he would be bunning with an 0-2 count, but uh, the pitch was upstairs for a ball. Jace has done a great job on the mound today. He can help his own cause, and this would be big if he can come through. The offering from Stotts, Krieger, strikeout. Swinging strikeout. Everybody held, held up on the bases. David Wolf at third. Tanner Ludgate at second, running for Cesar Hanojos. Brings up our two for two guy, a single and a double, Caden Schwent. Pitch from Stotts in the dirt, backhanded by Servando Perez. This is 10 10 KSIR, Brush, Fort Morgan, 4 to 2. Brush leads Valley, bottom of the fifth inning. Runners at second and third, the pitch from Stotts upstairs, a ball. By the way, that was strikeout number five for Ty Stotts. He has not walked a hitter. He's hit one, so he's been pretty effective in the strike zone. He's a senior. He, he's been around for a long time, it seems, and uh, the pitch from Stotts to Caden Schwent, a strike at the belt on the outside corner of the plate. Stotts, pitch number 86 right here upstairs to Schwent. Schwent ahead in the count. You enjoying this game? Sorry, Kevin. And one strike. You enjoying this more than yesterday? The quality of baseball. The quality of baseball is a lot better today. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday I was surprised. Schwent with another base hit, and Wolf comes in and scores, and Tanner Ludgate comes around third, and he scores. So Schwent three for three with two singles. I mean, he's done an incredible job here. And now it's 6-2 to two brush. That is a huge, huge base hit for Caden Schwinn. He's going to be hitting about 400 after this particular sequence. Caden Schwinn just continues to surprise me, John, but he's going to stay in that nine hole because it's a perfect spot for him. Brings to the top of the order Ty Griffith. Ty, one for three on the day. Well, the way you Strike. get to a state tournament is not through your top guys delivering. It's your bottom hitters that you're not necessarily expecting because then you stretch the lineup beautifully. Schwent with a big lead takes off and Griffith fouls that off down the left field line far. Caden's but, still uh, going. <laughs> Caden, Caden could run all day. My gosh, he is fast. It's fun to watch. Basketball court, he's all over and uh, if you delay your pass, it's going to be stolen by him. Yep. 
baseball field. He's ready to run. The pitch from Stotts to Ty Griffith. Outside, Schwint is running, and Schwint steals second base. Run, ba Brush gets a, a runner in scoring position on the stolen base by Caden Schwint. His second of the game. Mr. Do-It-All. Pitch from Stotts, and uh, Griffith lunges at that and just fouls it off. One ball and two strikes. Griffith understood that, hey, that pitch is outside. It's not my pitch, but I can do something with it. He's choking up about two or three inches on the bottom and swings through the pitch. So Griffith strikes out, swinging for Brush. They scored two runs on three hits. There were no Valley Viking errors, and there was one runner left on base. After five complete innings of play, Brush Beat Diggers 6, Valley Vikings 2. You're listening to Beat Digger Baseball on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. John Beltran back with Kevin Fergus. 6-2 to two, Brush Leeds Valley as we head to the top of the sixth inning. And Jace Krieger has done an outstanding job on the mound as the Beat Diggers go for the sweep of the Vikings winning yesterday in Gilcrest 20-9. It'll be the heart of the order. Servando Perez, Ty Stotts, and Brandon Blanco. Krieger's only thrown 63 pitches, only 19 out of the zone. So he is more than comfortable with his performance. And the number of pitches he has remaining, 110 is the limit with a minimum of three days rest under Colorado high school rules. Here is Servando Perez, who is 0 for 2. Fielder's choice, and he fly to center. The pitch and the breaking ball is right there for a strike down the middle. I got him as uh, 0 for 1 because that, that was a sacrifice fly that... Uh, well, is that sack though? He went from 2nd to 3rd. That's why I didn't... I don't count it as a you sack. Don't, you don't count that as not, a sack not, fly? Not from 2nd to 3rd if he scores. But, you know, we can debate that. And the 0-1 pitch. And that's upstairs. And the count leveled at 1-1. One and one. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong about that. But I don't... I sacrifice buns from one base to another. But I, I thought the sack fly was only from 3rd to home. But... You know, we'll run through the rules. Maybe I'm wrong, and I've been wrong many times. Just ask Amy Beltran. One ball and one strike. <laughs> Wind and pitch. Swung on and driven deep into left field. That one is home run distance, and it's way out of here. A majestic home run by Servando Perez. Well over the left field fence. And Valley is back on the board. It's 6-3 to three brush in the top of the sixth inning. He got all that one. I mean, you could just hear it off the bat, and it trajectory was uh, definitely headed towards Mr. Sidebottom's front yard. Well, Caden Schwent was simply a passenger there. He was not going to even do anything to try to make a play on that baseball. And here is Ty Stotts, who's been trouble for Brush. He is two for two. Drove in a run his first time up. Jace Krieger looks in. That's why that, that two-run base hit by Schwent is huge. The pitch... Swung on, popped up, and out of play behind the press box. It's 0-1. That pitch was up in the zone. And you want to keep it out of there because if you got that bat head a little bit higher, that could have been another home run. I'm sure Stotts is thinking that after hitting the home run last night and with Servando hitting one right in front of him. And the pitch. And the benders up and away. And the count levels at one ball and one strike. Six to three, brush over Valley. Top of the sixth inning. The Bee Diggers will not play until Tuesday. They'll be on the road against Strasburg. Kevin will have that game. I'll be with you Wednesday from Greeley against University. Here is the wind and the 1-1 pitch. And that's upstairs. It's two balls. And then Kevin be back with you on Thursday, a week from yesterday, when they host Strasburg. So three games in three days for the Bee Diggers. Here's the wind and the 2-1 pitch. And that ball's down and in. Framed nicely by Sessad. But it missed. 3-1. and one. And these are all critical games. B-Diggers have to win all these games. They are the better team. They're better than Valley. They're better than Platte Valley. They're better than Strasburg. But and that they still have the Liberty Common game to be rescheduled. Yeah, and that might not happen at least both games. Swung on. Popped up on a 3-1 to David Wolf in center. Going back to his left. Shy of the track. Reaches up and he... Did not make the catch. And Stotts is at second. Looked like a very makeable play out there. Now batting, third baseman, 
Boy, is that a straight up air? How did you see that, Kevin? I thought he was under it. I think he I think he got all the way up to the fence and I think he just ran out of room and probably when he his body ended up hitting the fence. Uh, it jarred his glove, and, right. and he wasn't able to make, make that catch. Well, we'll give him a double here, but that could really go either way because I saw contact between the glove and the fence, and that's the only reason that I'd give him a double. Aiden, that, Le, Aiden Lechuga comes in and runs for Ty Stotts, courtesy runner. As he has throughout the game, the pitch, and that fastball is inside. Again, but those are plays that look like they should be made. Brandon Blanco hit by a pitch and struck out. Again, if you... You step to my right here any time before the game is over and you give me the safe sign, I give you a coupon for a free hamburger from the concession stand. I've got four remaining. And the benders a strike on the inside corner at the knees. So just give me the safe sign. I've given away one. You give me the safe sign, boom, and it doesn't cost you anything. It's a free hamburger, and those are They're Verna the burgers. Verna burgers. One ball, one strike. And the pitch. Swung on and fisted in the air into foul territory and out of play on the left side. Count moves to one and two. Well, maybe either we don't have enough interest or, well, I mean, uh, people don't listen here when they're at the game unless they're beyond the outfield fence and they want to know what's going on necessarily and who the participants are. If you're listening to KSIR, you're driving by on the interstate, 1901 Emerson Street in Brush. The pitch, and that's up and in. Like I said, I gave away 20 hot dogs very quickly. And I got it. I got it. Two balls and two strikes. Here's a stretch. And the offering. Swung on. That ball is driven off the glove of the third baseman, Griffith. And advancing to third is going to be the runner. Aiden Lechuga, first and third, nobody out. Gosh, so tough to see from here on this ground level, Kevin. I'm going to score that in e E5. I mean, he, he just had to try to backhand it. I can't give everything a base hit. He didn't dive. He just stuck his glove out, and it was hit hard. But, again, a makeable play. So, luckily, I don't have to score that in max press. But, again, we're, we've got a speaker that's blocking us off, and we are really not a good level. Ground level is not the uh, the best to watch baseball and certainly score plays. The pitch swung on. That is popped up into foul territory to the screen as he no holes. And there is no ball in one strike. And the tying run is at the plate. See, it doesn't have to be an emphatic. Just a little safe, a little safe call. You get a free hammer. I got three to go. I got three remaining. Cooper Foster is singled and struck out. I got three remaining. Lechuga third, Blanco at first. Nobody out top of the sixth inning. Brush leads Valley 6-3. to three. And the offering. Swung on, grounded up the middle. Could be two. Shelton flipped the second for one. And the ball is dropped over there. And it was on the transfer. But still, I'm not even sure he caught that. Well, I'm not sure Hondo made that catch. The ball, came, call the ball out. came out of his glove. And it was on the ground. And he reached out with his foot on the bag and picked the ball up. Oh, he did. Okay. All right. Again, I'm blocked off by the pitcher there. Yeah, I knew he dropped the ball, but I thought it might have been on the transfer. Nonetheless, fielder's choice. And the brush defense really continues to, to scuffle. Just not good. That could have been a double play to get you two outs. Instead, it's 6-4 to four as a run scores. Lechuga crossing home plate. Here is Zach Miles, who's grounded out and struck out. The offering. Swing and a miss and a pitch up in the zone. No balls and one strike. The bee diggers are hanging on for dear life here at home. Engineering and consulting services for all of your projects at Western Engineering Consultants. Get your project started the right way. Western Engineering Consultants. Miles out of the seven hole to stretch. And the offering. Swung on. That is grounded left side. Shelton to his right. Throws to second for one. Back to first. And that is a ball that got off the glove of Wellen. And that looked like a a nice double play that the bead diggers were going to turn. I don't know what happened there. It looked like Kyle had it in the glove, and I think it would have been two, Kevin. Instead, it's just a 6-4 fielder's choice. This is frustrating. I mean, you got to work on this a lot. 
That looked like a standard, and that ball was hit in the hole. Shelton with a quick release, and the same thing for Hondo, and yet they still couldn't turn two. Just sloppy defense. Here is Max Doolittle, grounded out and popped out. The pitch, swing and a miss on the ball in the dirt. And again, you know what the problem is, has been the relays. But that relay looked like it was right there. No balls in one strike. They just can't figure it out. And we're in game number nine. And if Brush is going to make it to the state tournament, that's not the way to do it. The stretch and the offering. And that is inside. And I hate to sound critical, Kevin, but I've been watching B Digger baseball for two and a half decades. And you know what this program prides themselves on. And this is not, this is not what we're used to seeing. They're better than this, and they haven't been playing like it defensively throughout the season. The pitch, swing and a miss. And what happens is that when you're sloppy defensively, you have to rely on your pitchers in order to bail you out. One ball, two strikes, two across, with two down and a man on. The tying runs to the plate here in the top of the sixth inning, and the bead diggers with a 6-4 to four lead. Jace just needs to put him away right here. The stretch and the offering. Curveball is swung on, grounded up the middle. The chopper to Shelton. He steps on the bag for the out. And Braxton Shelton takes care of that defensively. And that does it for Valley here in the inning. They do score two runs, and they strand one. Five and one-half innings are in the books. It's Brush 6, Valley 4. This is Brush B. Digger Baseball on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Well, when Caden Schwinn delivered a two-run single in the bottom of the fifth inning, that provided insurance for Brush. But then Valley came back with two runs in the sixth. So the Bay Diggers looking for more insurance. Six to four. I'm John Beltran with Kevin Fergus. Braxton Shelton is now the hitter for the Bay Diggers. The pitch, and that tails away. One ball and no strikes for the right-hander, Ty Stotts, looking to go the distance. Shelton was hit by a pitch. And the offering, swung on line, base hit into center field. Braxton is now two for three, doubled earlier in this game. And he got all of that one. Well, that's a good start. Here is Kyle Wellen. Struck out, but prior, or popped out, excuse, excuse me, and prior to that had two base hits. He's two for three. The stretch and the offering. Low with the off speed. I think the one thing with Kyle, his hitting's impressive. He's a good athlete, but he does have to improve his fielding. He, I think he might lead the team in errors, or he's up there. And again, it, it's the whole thing across the board, and that's for a strike. Everybody has to work on something individually and collectively. But he's a tremendous athlete, a really good athlete. He can do it all. And he's smart, yet he understands the game. The pitch. Swung on line. He's now three for four. A base hit into left field. Again, his offense is money. As Foster gets the ball back in after bobbling it for just a second. And it's first and second with nobody out. I mean, the way the B-Diggers approach things from the offensive standpoint, I thought they had a good offensive approach against University. They just faced some good pitching. They squandered a couple of opportunities. They had first and second, for instance, with Hondo up there in a 2-0 count. He hit a laser on one hop that turned into a 6-4-3 mm -hmm. double play. But those are double plays that Brush doesn't turn. And, and that was just bad luck for Hondo. Hit the ball really well. And the pitch. Fastball is outside. Alejandro Matos Garcia has grounded to first. Struck out and hit into a fielder's choice. He is 0 for 3. And he certainly do with the B-Diggers having two on and nobody out in the sixth inning. The pitch. Fastball is high again. I've got three remaining, three remaining on National Hamburger Day. All I get to do is step to my right, give me the safe sign, step to my right, give me the safe sign before the end of the game, you get a free hamburger. And that's in the dirt. 3-0, and oh, and the ball got away. It skipped away. Yeah, don't be shy about it. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything, but give me a safe sign. That's it. It's not a song and dance. Three balls and no strikes. This is the first time that uh, Hondo's been ahead in the count tonight. And the pitch. That's a fastball for a strike down the middle knee level. It's 3-1. and one.
at the belt. Stotts comes home. Swung on, driven towards right center field, and that is going to be a base hit. That ball will bounce up against the fence. Two runs will score. Shelton and Wellen will step on home plate. It's a two-run double for Hondo, who's pumped up at second base. And the Bee Diggers have extended the lead. It's 8-4. to four. Nice job of Hondo going the other way. He needed that, and he got all of that baseball. And here is Caden Moriarty, who's grounded out. There will be perhaps a pitching change. We know there's going to be a courtesy runner for Brush at second. Looks like Dominic Ontiveros. And we will have a pitching change here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Brought to you by Greg Mullen at State Farm Insurance with the score. Brush 8, Valley 4. It's a one-minute break on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. The Bay Diggers lead 8-4 to four here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The new pitcher is Cooper Foster. Max Doolittle goes to left. And Ty Stotts, who's the pitcher of record, is now at first base. Those are your three players that have moved around here for Valley. The first three have reached for Brush. Base hits from Shelton and Wellen. And then a two-run double from Hondo. Cooper Foster has the 0-2 record, 13.12 ERA on five innings pitch coming into this game. By the way, did you see that Cubs Pirates play? Uh, yes, I did. It, uh, it's, it's one of the that most was amazing. It's one of the Why? most embarrassing plays I've ever Why? seen. Why would you chase him down when all you have to do is step on first base? And if you don't do that and you tag him out, even if the run scores, it still doesn't count. The we runner even looked came at, from second base. The runner came he from second. third and just he kept could have right scored, on coming. Had a beer in the dugout, and if they would have tagged out Baez before he got to first, the run still doesn't count. And Baez ended up on second, and then ended up scoring on the yeah. next. Uh, yeah, the next yeah. batter. Yeah, if my hand. son does that. He's suspended from living at home for three days. I mean, you cannot do something like that. And the pitch. That's way outside for the right-hander to Caden Moriarty, who's grounded out, delivered a two-run single, and popped out. He's one for three. The B-Diggers scored a run in the first, one in the second, two in the third, two in the fifth, two so far here in the sixth, and the offering, and that is outside. Valley's runs came in the first and third, and then two in the top of the sixth inning to close to within two, but the B-Diggers now lead eight to four. And the pitch, swing and a miss. He was ahead of the changeup. Ball two, strike one. Nobody out. At second is Dominic Ontiveros. Last night's ball game, Brush did not score in the third inning. That was the only inning they did not score in today, the fourth. And it's fouled off to the left and out of play. And the count is at two and two to the number five hitter in the lineup for the B-Diggers. One of the best pitchers in the state, undoubtedly a no-hitter this year. And had a great game also against Resurrection Christian. A very good one against Eaton. And the Benders up and away. Ball three, strike two. To Caden Moriarty. On deck is David Wolf. Pitch from Foster. Swung on and driven deep to right field. Way back. And that one is gone. It's a two-run round tripper. For Caden Moriarty, and the Bead Diggers have a four-burger here in the bottom of the sixth inning and lead 10-4 to four over the Valley Vikings. And they got to fix that scoreboard. That's a mess over there now. Nobody's yeah. adding correctly. I don't know what they're doing. 10-4 to four should be the score. And here is David Wolf. And I don't think that was a sunset home run. I think he hit that well enough. That might have been out of a couple of other parks. David Wolf, David Wolf has struck out, lined out, and singled. He's one for three. Yeah, that was a no-doubter. As soon as he hit the ball, you could tell that uh, he had enough carry. It was going to it was gonna make the fence and beyond. And the pitch. That's a strike on the inside corner with a fastball. Now the B-Diggers can breathe easy up by six. At 10 to 4, about to improve to 5 and 4. That's the reason I have five coupons because they get their fifth win. Swing and a miss. But again, I need the safe sign. You've got to give me the safe sign to my right. You get the coupon for the free burger. We've given away two. Got three more. No balls and two strikes. He no holds weights to hit next. And the pitch to Davin. 
Swung on and driven in the gap in right center field. Long run for Miles. It's not going to be a play he's going to make. And that rolls towards the fence. And David Wolf has got a double here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And the B-Diggers are tearing up the baseball right now. They are having a field day now with Valley pitching. We have seen a single, a single, a double, a home run, and a double. Five have reached. And as a result, the B-Diggers, Kevin, have 16, 16 hits in the hits. game. Like I yesterday. I was going to say, yep. Here's Cesar Hinojos. And you know what could happen? We might not go to the seventh. Very well. Could be. Rush keeps pressure on. They have nobody out. Runner at second. Six-run lead. Hinojos is singled twice and grounded out. He's two for three. And his average has gone up as a result of what he's done today. Let us remind you that B-Digger Baseball is brought to you in part by Bank of Colorado. Not just a bank in Colorado, their Bank of Colorado. Proud supporter. Nate uh, Tyne is running for Dave and Wolf at second base. Proud supporter of local sports and academics. Here is the stretch and the pitch. And that's a breaking ball for a strike. No balls in one strike to Enojos. As Kevin mentioned, Tyne is at second. Nobody out. Five have reached and four across here in the sixth inning. The pitch. Swing and a miss and a ball down in the zone. And inside, it's 0-2. Yeah, I think Coach Odell's going to be working on defense, 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 and more defense. They've got to clean it up. The pitch. Breaking ball is a called strike three. That pitch looked up and in. It's a stolen base for Tyne. And there's one down. Now, I thought that was a little bit above the letters, but there is one down. Here's Jace Krieger, who has thrown a very good game today for Brush. And let's see if Coach Odell's going to make another change here. Well, actually, that's not Krieger. That's why. That's not Krieger. That's Sam Metlin. Yep. Sam Metlin's in there for Krieger. You know what that means. Sam will take the mound here in the seventh if they go to the seventh. Well, could Sam do it? Because he threw about 50 pitches. And he so can't I think do he it. has to have a day off. You're right. You're right. So. You're right. As usual, Kevin, I stand corrected. I say that a lot in my life. I stand corrected. Well, that's why you wanted me here tonight. <laughs> was because yeah. I was there last night. Yes. I know I know what was going on. So Fouled off the end of the bat to the screen. It's 0-1. Yes, I would have said something nonsensical, and you would have not been there to correct me had you not been here. No balls in one strike. Four across, bottom of the sixth inning. The B-Diggers lead the Valley Vikings 10-4 to on a gorgeous afternoon here in Brush where the temperature at game time was at 81 and is still sitting at 81. The stretch and the pitch swung on and grounded up the middle, headed for center field, a dive, and it's a base hit for Sam Metlin. And there is Nate Tyne scoring. And the Bead Diggers have five across in the sixth inning and lead 11-4. to four. I think that is Sam Metlin's first varsity base hit. Yeah, it is. And, and speaking of base hit, here's base hit Caden Schwint. I mean, we should just call him base hit. He's three for three. It's two singles and a double. And the pitch. Swing and a miss on the off speed. No balls in one strike. Only one out here in the inning. The B-Diggers have 17 hits in the game. And the offering. Swing and a miss. They pulled the string like a yo-yo. And it's 0-2. Again, I got three coupons left. You step to my right. Give me the safe sign. It's a free hamburger. I got three of those left. If not, I'm going to eat a bunch of hamburgers myself to pitch. And the call strike three on the curveball on the inside corner. Two strikeouts looking for Max Doolittle. And there's two down. That was a borderline strike. And now Schwint is three for four, though. What a game he's had. What a game. What a season. He's just being consistent all the way through. I mean, even in those Eaton games, when we weren't getting base hits, he was walking. He was getting on base. Ty Griffith fouls it off at 0-1. No balls and one strike to Griffith. The Bay Diggers with an 11 to four lead, three outs away from sweeping Valley. They won yesterday, 22-9. Runner goes, 
Swung on, driven deep to left field, and that ball is going to be, is it caught? No, it's, it's off passed. the glove of the left fielder. Rounding third and scoring easily as taking second on the play is Ty Griffith. The B-Diggers lead 12-4, to and it looked like Doolittle had a play on that one. The ball had plenty of topspin. We'll give him a straight-up double, but I think that play could have been made, no doubt. 12-4 to brush, only because that was struck so hard. And as Doolittle was reaching out to his right, that topspin, I think Kevin really took over and kind of ate him up. Yeah, I didn't hear any clanging off his glove on that one. Braxton Shelton had a home run swing and a changeup, and he fouls it off. It's 0-1. You know what he wants to do? I know, it, I know Braxton well enough. Mm -hmm. You know what he wants to do? He and, wants to end the game right here. Thank you. Yeah. Again, this is why you're here, Kevin. I knew. <laughs> I was looking for the three words, end the game, and you gave them to me. Rush nope. with a 12-4 to 4 lead, runner at second, Shelton at the plate, two outs. You bet. Let's yeah, finish yeah. it off right here in the bottom of the sixth. The pitch, and that breaking ball is a strike just below the letters. No balls and two strikes. If he doesn't end the game, it's my fault because I jinxed him. <laughs> right, I shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that, but he's capable. 0-2, the runner off of second, and the offering. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball. And Braxton strikes out on three pitches, and the inning is over. But the B-Diggers put together six runs on seven hits. No errors, and a man left. We head to the seventh and final inning in Brush. B-Digger Baseball is brought to you in part by Equitable Savings and Loan. The score, it's the B-Diggers 12, the Valley Vikings 4 on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Along with the head coach of the Class 3A state runner-ups, Kevin Fergus. I'm John Beltran. I have no distinction to my name. It is 12-4 in favor of the B-Diggers going to the seventh inning. Kevin, they needed that sixth inning just for some confidence hitting-wise. And uh, they, they basically doubled up the number of runs they had going into the inning. And Brush earned those runs because Valley didn't commit a single miscue there. Brush is just doing the down and dirty and getting base hit after base hit. And they're, they're, they're taking what what's being given to them and and uh they're allowing the hits to fall and they're running the bases well today i mean they ended up having some base running errors against uh university last week uh at least they haven't had any base running errors today here is cameron dudley the number nine hitter followed by izzy gutierrez and caleb kachari dudley has popped out and grounded out both to Braxton Shelton, who's been very busy defensively and offensively. He's got two hits. Two hits and four at-bats. So here we go to begin the top of the seventh inning. Valley's played a pretty good game, but the B-Diggers finally had their big inning. They've scored in every one but the fourth. And David Wolf is the pitcher. Swung on line, foul down the right side. As Dudley tried to go the other way. Caden Moriarty goes from right to center. Sam Metlin's the new right fielder. Close the book on Jace Krieger, the pitcher of record. He goes six innings, 84 pitches, four runs, three earned. Seven hits, three strikeouts. But you know what? Zero walks. I love that. I love that. You are pitching to these hitters, pitching to contact, not messing around in the strike zone. No balls and one strike to Dudley. Wine and offering. Fastball swung on, grounded up the middle. Shelton behind the bag, has it, spins, throws to first, and that's going to be offline. It'll be a base hit. Runner headed to second, now back to first. That is a base hit. A straight-up base hit. A great play by Shelton. Was nearly able to make it. My son had that same one against Mountain View and was able to make the play not quite as deep into the outfield. I think that extra half-step into the outfield, that's a tough one. But Braxton with a ton of athleticism, but that's a straight-up hit. Well unstretched, but uh, the, the throw was just a little bit off target, and it, it ended up going up against the screen. Bounces in to Izzy Gutierrez, who is two for three. He's been on base every time, reached on an air and singled twice. Valley does not have an error in the game, and the B-Diggers have just two, so they played better defensively today. And the offering, and that bounces in. Two balls and no strikes. The Vikings have come up now with eight hits in the game after that one. Ten fewer than the B-Diggers. Brush is stranded eight, and Valley's left four on base. 
And apparently Gutierrez has an issue with the belt on his uniform that apparently is, uh, is partially broken. That's why he just took it off completely. Two balls and no strikes. This is the first time that David Wolf has been on the mound for the Brushby Diggers this year. Up and in. Went with a fastball. It's 3-0. and oh. On deck is Caleb Kachari. Valley looking to make some noise here in the seventh. But they trail by eight. And David Wolf delivers. That's a fastball just inside. It's a four-pitch walk. First walk issued by a B-digger pitcher today. So first and second with nobody out for the left-handed hitting Kachari. A fielder's choice of sack bunts and grounded out to second. He is 0 for 2. It's a good bunter, but I don't think you're going to do that here unless you're bunting for a base hit, and he could. The third baseman, Griffith, is playing even with a bag. I would watch out for a bunt here. Wolf falls off to the first base side as a right-handed pitcher. He could certainly do it. And the offering, and that's a fastball for a strike. Oh, boy. That was a gift strike. That was below the knees. No balls and one strike. At second is Cameron Dudley. Izzy Gutierrez at first. Looking back. Coming home. Bounces in. Nice block by Cesar. Oh. That's why they call them the tools of ignorance. Cesar just took that off the chest. Yeah. It's protector. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for the word protector in that statement. One well, he, he was rubbing. He was rubbing. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, that's not that's that hurts a little bit. One ball, one strike. Down and away off the glove of Hinojos. That'll be a pass ball and the runners advance. Dudley to third. On the pass ball. Valley's got a little bit of life in them. They're not, they're not going to just go away. Being down 12-4 to four in the top of the seventh inning. Out of the windup. And the 2-1. Swung on and fouled right behind the plate. And the count is at two balls and two strikes. Here to the hitter, Caleb Kachari. Still nobody out. Here in the top of the seventh inning. Here's the wind and the offering. Swung on and lifted foul. Out of play off to the left. So the count remains there at... Two and two to Kachari trying to fight off these pitches. Here from David Wolf, a hard throwing right hander. Dudley at third, Gutierrez at second, out of the windup. Nobody out. 12 to 4 brush in the top of the seventh inning. The kick in the pitch. Fastball is up and away. Took something off it. It's three and two. And remember, the heart of the order is right behind this hitter. He gets on, and all of a sudden you gotta start thinking about this. Yeah, David needs to take care of Kashari here because you got Servando, who hit a home run. And Ty Stotts. And you got Ty Stotts, who's three for three with three doubles today. Swing and a miss and a breaking ball. A tremendous pitch and a 3-2 thrown by David Wolf. And there's one down. That is a clutch pitch for the senior right-hander. He needed that. We needed that. We needed to get an out here in the inning. Rush just needs outs. Got the first one. Need to take care of business. Get, get the next two outs here. Although these next two batters, they started the game, they were hitting north of 500. Well, and and it, they haven't done anything to uh, drop yeah, and, that at this point. Perez is a home run in this game, and his last time up, and it's in the dirt. He is one for three, a fielder's choice to short. Then he popped the center. And Kevin, as you mentioned, he got all of that on the home run. I mean, that was a no-doubter. One ball and no strikes. Men at second and third. 12 to four, the B-Diggers lead. And the pitch. And that's down and away on the fastball. It's 2-0. and oh. Rockies rained out for the second time this week in New York earlier and against Pittsburgh today. So no pro sports tonight because the Nuggets will play tomorrow night in game four up two games to one. And the 2-0 pitch. Swing and a miss and a fastball that tied him up. Ball two, strike one. Game is an hour and 51 minutes old, or as Kevin likes to say, 111 minutes. You, you like to, It sounds like a longer game when you give it triple digits. Here's the wind and the 2-1. Swung on and chopped foul on the breaking ball up the third base side. 
Count goes to two and two. Again, I got three coupons left. If nobody gives me the safe sign, you step to my right, give me the safe sign before the end of the game. You get a free coupon for a hamburger. If not, I, I will certainly take care of them myself. We have a legend here at the park in Muss. George I thought, I thought Muss was coming up in order to give well, you the safe sign I, over here. Well, but they're not listening in. That's the only benefit. But right. I'd give them one. The 2-2 pitch. And the Bender's down and away. It's 3-2. and two. I figured I Larry or uh, Lance Schwent or Jerry Bass out in left field listening to the game on the radio. Would they, they'd be in in order to come get their oh, burger. We do appreciate their listenership, especially when they have to put up with a clown like me. And the 3-2 pitch. That's a fastball. But where did that miss? Where did that miss? That looked like a strike. But it's ball four, and it's a walk. Must have been a tad high to Perez. And here's Ty Stotts, who's doubled three times. Man, that's a borderline pitch, but I thought that got the corner. I think the umpires called that pitch a strike yeah. numerous times yeah. today. Yeah, that should have been strike three. But anyway, here is Stotts. With the bases loaded and one out in the seventh. 12-4, to four, Brush leads Valley. The wine in the pitch, down and away, skips to the screen, ricochets right back to Hinojos, and with only about 15 to 20 feet between the catcher and the backstop and the board, which contributes to that ricochet, you don't want to advance. That ball's got to pinball around in order to score. Three doubles for Stotts, but you know two of those could have been played out there. One by Moriarty in right, the other by Dave and Wolf in center. They were borderline doubles. 1-0 pitch. And that one all the way to the backstop. And again, ricochets back. And Davin right now appears to be overthrowing, Kevin. I think he knows. Hey, this is a number four hitter. He's three for three with three doubles. And uh, he doesn't want to give up anything, but he's trying too hard. He just needs to relax and throw, throw his pitch and allow the natural movement of the ball do its thing. Outstanding, no doubt. But again, he throws it right into the ground, 3-0. Yeah, I mean, what does it hurt? He hits a home run, it's 12-8. to eight. You still have a four-run lead. And then you have five, six, seven hitters right. coming up that Brush has handled very well today at this point. Well, Valley didn't give up yesterday. It was 20-7 to seven when they scored a couple of more runs and before Brush won the pitch. Swing and a miss on a ball that was down in the zone. And that's – Stotts is figuring that, you know, that uh, one run is not going to do as much as four. So he was going to swing almost – regardless if it was in the area code because that was ball four. Three balls and one strike. Let's see if Davin goes right after him. Wine in the pitch, and that is outside. It's a walk to Ty Stotts. He drives in another run. Scoring is Cameron Dudley. It's 12-5 to five brush. Here is Brandon Blanco hit by a pitch, struck out and reached on an air. And the last one he hit was really hard down to third. It'll be interesting to see how many errors end up on max preps only because there's been a couple of questionable ones that could have been played out there. Well, I know we had back-to-back. -back. So we had back-to-back. You, -back. you, you, you gave, you gave uh, one a hit and one an error. Well, one was up against the fence in center. Moriarty got spun around. The ball deflected off his glove. If they're routine plays or plays right at you, then I usually give an error. So they're, they're not easy to call, especially... When I'm at ground level, pitches up and in. One ball and no strikes. Here to Brandon Blanco. Wind is picking up, John, from yeah. uh, moving from right to left towards left field. And the offering. That fastball is nowhere close. Upstairs, 2-0. and oh. We are approaching 6 o'clock mountain time. This is 10-10 KSIR. Brush, Fort Morgan, Weldon, and KSIR.com. John Beltran with Kevin Fergus and the 2-0 pitch. Very high. He's getting higher with every pitch. Started off lower in the zone, then has elevating 3-0. and And David cannot find the zone. He, right now, has thrown 27 pitches, only 9 strikes. The offering, and he walked him. It's a fastball down and in at the knees. Two consecutive bases loaded walks. That to Brandon Blanco. All of a sudden, it's a 12-6 game. And here comes... Tom Odell out to the mound. You're not concerned yet, but you're starting to get there. Your friendly local community bank serving Wiggins and all surrounding areas is High Plains Bank. Find out more at highplainsbank.com. 
And again, there's plenty of time. I still have, and I'll keep. We'll keep it right here, Kevin. Yeah, Moriarty is going to come in and pitch. Wolf will go back to center field. Not pitching for you. So this should be game over pretty quickly. I mean, Caden has not pitched in eight days, and will not pitch after today until Wednesday. You would assume against University to close this game out. Moriarty, who has got impeccable numbers. On the hill for Brush this season, has a no-hitter to his credit against Sterling. Moriarty. Why don't they put one loss totals here for Brush? They don't do that? I don't know they, why. They should do that. I don't that. know why. you got to keep score the right way. Uh, Moriarty is 2-1. and one. He He's should two be 2-1, and one. And one, but that, that should be on max preps. That should be corrected. And Hondo is 1-2. and two. Yeah, 2-1. Two and one. Yeah, they should amend that to correct w winning and losing. Two and one with an ERA of .35. He's been unhittable. Yeah, that should be part of the number that goes up there. Is your one loss record as a pitcher. And now he's not in a safe situation because the tying run is well down the line. However, he could lower his ERA by getting two outs. And those runners, Kevin, are not his responsibility. So the bases are loaded with one out in a very sloppy inning here. We thought I, we'd be out of here like half an hour ago. Yeah, I figured. I, I, I would imagine that Moriarty will come in. He'll he'll just be throwing strikes and uh, just get ahead in the count. And especially with uh, the bottom part of the order for the Valley Vikings coming up, uh, Moriarty should take care of that and they're be able to close the game out here. Well, Tom Odell's not taking any chances. You have... One of the top two pitchers in the state here in Moriarty. Again, a 2-1 and one record, a .35 ERA. A no-hitter against Sterling last Thursday when he struck out 15. He struck out 16 against Resurrection Christian prior to that. And he's only a junior. And, I, yeah, I think you're right. I don't think he messes around. He might throw a breaking ball here and there. But he's going to go pretty much straight fastball and paint those corners as he has all season. So at third is Perez. Ty Stotts. As the courtesy runner at second, and that's Aiden Lechuga. And at first base for Valley is Brandon Blanco. And Cooper Foster is now the hitter. He's singled, struck out looking, and hit into a 6-4 fielder's choice. And he got his first hit tonight because he was 0 for the season right before he ended up getting his uh, single. Here we go with Caden Moriarty out of the stretch. The B-Diggers with a 12-6 lead in a very extended top of the seventh inning. And the offering, fastball is low. One ball and no strikes. And you would figure, hey, this guy's one of the best pitchers. This is going to be easy. But he's coming into a situation he's not used to. He doesn't have the bases loaded no, bases at any loaded. point this season. And he doesn't come in in relief. He started the three games and has been outstanding in all three. So this is a little bit foreign to him. 1-0 pitch, and he bounced that one, and that one ricochets, but the base runner will not advance from third, holding up his pair as 2-0. And again, these three runners all belong to the second pitcher, David Wolf. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, I think once Caden throws that first strike, he'll feel comfortable. Remember the previous two hitters, Ty Stotts and Brandon Blanco, drew bases loaded walks. At the belt, 2-0, and that is a strike. There's a fastball on the outer half at the knees. It's 2-1. and one. Now I think he'll feel it, and he'll he'll bring it. And... Yeah, he just needed that one pitch. Now he's going to go right after him. Not that he didn't try before, but again, you just get into rhythm once you throw that first strike. And the 2-1 offering. That's a fastball, and that must have been a tad low. Moriarty thought it was the same location as the previous pitch. Three and one. On deck is Zach Miles. I think the B diggers are not happy with a couple of calls here in the seventh inning. Three one offering. Swung on, popped up, down the right field line, backing up as well. And, and outfielder and infielder converge. Hondo makes the catch. Runner breaks for the plate and scoring is Perez. It'll be a sack fly on what could have been a messy play out in shallow right. Cooper Foster. Gets a sack fly. It's 12 to 7. A nice play by the second baseman, Alejandro Matos Garcia. 
That had trouble written all over it, but Hondo is able to secure the baseball. That ball was just in the wrong spot for Wellen. It was in the wrong spot for Metlin, but uh, Hondo had the angle. Without a doubt, here's Zach Miles. He's 0 for 3. He's grounded out to short, struck out, hit into a fielder's choice to short the pitch. Fastball is up and away. That run is charged to David Wolf. One ball and no strikes. Valley is trying to make it interesting, but they need two more to get the tying run to the plate and turn over the lineup. And the pitch right there for a strike on the inner half of the knees with a fastball. And the count evens at one and one. We didn't have too much scoring for a while, but now we have had 13 runs since the beginning of the bottom of the fifth inning. One ball, one strike, k Dog. Looking back, coming home, swung on and driven in the air to right center field. That could be trouble. That's going to drop for a base hit, and that's going to score at least a run. And into second with an RBI double is Zach Miles to third is Brandon Blanco. And now breaking for the plate is Blanco. It's 12-9. to nine. We'll call that an RBI double. And then the ball got hung up out there in the outfield, or in the infield, I should say, because I don't think he scored straight up. Kevin, did we have an air out there on brush because that shouldn't have scored that other run? Yeah, and Blanco's not a swift runner. Well, it's 12-9. to 9. And again, those two runs charged to David Wolf, the pitch. And that's a fastball down and away to Doolittle. Grounded out, popped out, and hit into a fielder's choice. The tying run is on deck. Valley has five across in the seventh. Valley and, just doesn't give up, do they? And the fastball is low, 2-0. and oh. Now Cameron Dudley on deck is the nine hitter. That's the first hit that uh, Moriarty has given up in about a couple of weeks. And the 2-0 pitch. Fastball is up and away, 3-0. and oh. Remember, the starter, Krieger, did not walk a single hitter. Three balls and no strikes to Max Doolittle. He won't swing here. No way. Now with a 3-0 count, the pitch, and that bounces in and bounces away, and Miles to third, and the throw's going to be made for some reason, and the ball skips away. The air on Hinojos, and the ball's in left field, and it's 12-10, and the B-Diggers are getting very careless here. Well, that's at least one air in the inning that we know of. I have no idea why Sessa threw that ball. There was They were not going to get him at third. So a wild pitch and an air on the catcher, Nohols. And it's 12 to 10. Yeah, that is just insane. The Bay Diggers have allowed six runs in the inning. And this is going to look like a very competitive game by the time it's done. You never would have thought that Valley would send the tying run to the plate. But Brush got sloppy with a baseball. And not just on that play. Again, you want to grade the defense in this game, it's probably scoring below average again. And that's what the B Diggers have got to get better at. They're too good of a ball club to show these flaws, especially this late in the season. Because we're already more than halfway through. And I know I've said that, but it bears repeating because it keeps happening. Here's Cameron Dudley, 0 for 3 in the game. At first is Max Doolittle. The pitch is low. One ball and no strike. So, yeah, Blanco and then Miles was on the back end of that who scored. Going to have to figure out what Coach Kistler has been telling his kids over there. I mean, they, they have just not given up, shown a lot of uh, temerity and uh, being able to just stay with Brush and uh, dig, dig, dig back into the game. The fastball is in there for a strike. One ball and one strike. Two-step lead at first. Let's see if k Dog can put him away. All those runs charge to David Wolf. That's a fastball, strike two. I mean, they're going to win this game, but it's not going to be pretty. Not with this the way they ended it. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Dudley is one for three as base hit came in his most recent plate appearance. The pitch and the benders up and in. Two and two. Yeah, you have to credit Valley here. A three and eight team going in. And they could have laid down. They were down by eight. And to 
The fact that they have this much of a chance is incredible. The pitch. That is a called strike three. And the Bead Diggers have won the game over the Valley Vikings. And that is a sense of relief. Almost more than a sense of joy. The Bead Diggers win 12 to 10. <laughs> and the inning for Valley. They scored six runs on two hits. And there was at least one error, if not two, and one left. Final score, the Bead Diggers 12 and the Valley Vikings 10 on 10-10 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. The Bead Diggers defeat the Valley Vikings this afternoon in Brush by the very surprising score of 12 to 10. Bead Digger postgame show brought to you by Morgan Community College here to make your dreams become a reality for both traditional and non-traditional students. Check them out at morgancc.edu. I'm John Beltran with Kevin Fergus. Final line score, unofficial line score for the Bead Diggers. 12 runs on 18 hits, 3 errors. Could have been more. 8 left on base. 10 runs, 9 hits, no errors. And 5 left on base for Valley. The winning pitcher was Jace Krieger. He threw the ball very well. The loss went to Ty Stodd's time of the game, 2 hours and 8 minutes. And this game started off very cleanly. I mean, it was very clean for a while. Valley got an RBI double from Stotts for a 1-0 lead. The B-Diggers would tie it in the bottom of the first on a run-scoring ground out from Hondo. It was 1-1 one -one until the second inning. Caden Schwind, who was 3-4 for four in the day, had a base hit, scoring a run, making it 2-1. But Valley came back and got a run-scoring double from Stotts to deadlock the game at 2. Caden Moriarty. Then with a two-run single in the bottom of the third inning, making it 4-2, to two, Caden Schwint had a two-run base hit. A little bit later on in the game, in fact, that was in the fifth inning, it was 6-2, to two, and you figured, okay, good clean game, 6-2. to two. But then uh, things changed quite a bit going into the sixth inning as Valley got a solo homer from Sedvando Perez, making it 6-3. to three. They would tack on another run on a B-digger air as it was 6-4. to four. And then the Bead Diggers put it away seemingly in the bottom of the sixth inning. Honda with a two-run double. Moriarty with a two-run homer. That made it 10-4. Sam Metlin with an RBI single. Ty Griffith had an RBI double, making it 12-4. But Valley came back. David Wolf could not close it out for Brush. Had a couple of struggles there with bases loaded walks. Caden Moriarty came in, and even Moriarty struggled. You know, he had uh, control issues, gave up a big couple of big hits. And Valley got to within 12-10, but he's able to strike out. Cameron Dudley and the Bead Diggers improved to 5-4, and four, and Valley drops to 3-9. and nine, But still, a lot of holes, Kevin. And I'm just being blunt about it because I don't think, I mean, I could be subjective, but that's not our job is to be objective. There are lots of holes in this brush team that have to be closed and these gaps filled before they're ready for playoff contention later on. We want to see these guys have success. And the only reason why you say it, why I say it, is, hey, in order to have success, you've got to take care of what you need to on the field. And don't give the other team any cracks in the armor. And you got you got to cinch those up. I mean, little pop-ups that are foul, foul ball, that need to be caught. It can't drop on the ground. You hit the fence, you still need to catch it. Use two hands. And just, uh, just those consistency of, of just doing that over and over and over and to the point where it becomes in your sleep and you, you just make the plays. Offensively, the approach seems to be pretty good. I mean, then again, they're not facing the pitching they did earlier this year when they took on Eaton and Resurrection Christian and even University, who they have another meeting with Wednesday. But if they're scoring this many runs, they'll be okay. Uh, they had a, a couple of strikeouts in there, but... As long as the starting pitching can stay intact, which was very good today. I mean, we got to talk about Krieger. I thought besides Caden Schwint that he was one of the players in the game, then Brush will be okay, but you need some support behind uh, your starting pitching. But that that's certainly the highlight of the season with the way Moriarty is thrown as a starter, with the way Hondo's thrown for the most part. He's had a couple of issues here and there. And then Jace Krieger today. Uh, was very good, I thought. Sam Metlin threw four innings yep. yesterday, and, uh, you know, basically he gave up two runs, one of them on a Bach uh, that, that opened the door to where they were able to score another run there in the in the bottom of the sixth inning yesterday. But Sam Metlin threw well, and so, you know, he was effective. So a number of pitchers for Brush are doing well, and their offense is taking care of, 
of what they need to by getting the base hits. Now they just need to take care of uh, uh, the fielding aspect. The Bay Diggers will have three games in three days coming up next week. Their next game is in Strasburg on Tuesday against the Indians. Kevin will have that game at 4 o'clock right here on 1010 KSIR. For Kevin Fergus, I'm John Beltran. The final score in what turned out to be a wild affair score-wise, the Brush Bee Diggers 12, the Valley Vikings 10 on 1010 KSIR and the Eastern Plains Sports Network.